call the meeting of Silver Falls School Board to order. Uh, first of all, I have uh, attendance and thank you. Everyone is here tonight. <laughs> Great. Glad to see that. And uh, agenda review. Do you have any thing on the agenda? I had to move that we discuss uh, the roll call protocols. Okay, do I have a second to put that on the agenda? I'll second that. Okay, move second put on the agenda tonight uh, on roll call. And why don't we place that? Uh, why don't we place that first? Take care of that. Any other, anything else on the agenda review? Okay. Take a vote with that. Jennifer? Yes. yes. Owen? Yes. Josh? Yeah. Aaron? Yes. Phil? Yes. Tom? Yes. Derek? Yes. All in favor? Okay. And with that said, uh, moving that first thing. Uh, what we're talking about is we, well, since I've been on the board and they started, I guess, during COVID, is doing an individual uh, vote instead of a yay-nay. Uh, yay-nay would be all those in favor, uh, aye, opposed, no, and then uh, if there's any no, then it's noted by the recorder that who, who made those no. Speeds it up a little bit over taking an individual vote each time. And so uh, I'm fine either way. Uh, it saves time the other way, but uh, what are thoughts? I have a background question. Where is this coming from? Debbie. <laughs> to, oh, oh, Debbie. Okay. okay. <laughs> just, just, so it just, just seems asking to be taking a little while. used to be, and then during COVID went to the then individual predating that why was the change made from yays nays to individual COVID. because of covid we were online oh, and okay. that was the only way for me to see the votes because i couldn't you know okay words in here you can tell where the yays and nays are coming from hmm. so. I, I wonder about um when we have online participation from board members well here's my thought on it I like the transparency of where people vote. I think nays or yays could be lost in translation. But I mean, so that way, if you're a no or a yes, mm -hmm. you're it's a little easier to know how people decided. But that's my only, I mean, only thoughts I have on the matter. We can always try going back to the former system. And then if there's any opposition to it, we can always change it back. You know, um, it, and especially that maybe um, can help mm -hmm. Debbie a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know she's got a lot of administrative burden, and it speeds things up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I think you know, with the online participation, that's usually generally the exception, not the rule. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think this board does a great job of being here in person, and rarely do we have to use the online options. So um, I'm in favor of giving it a try on the old system. If we don't like it, we can always go back. Just a clarification, if. If it got to a point where you weren't 100% sure, then you would go down and do like a roll call if it was too close to yeah. call. Yeah. I think the only the, the only difference would be, you know, everybody agrees. And when he calls for a no, that's when I would know if somebody was opposed and I would note it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the idea of people voting at the same time. That's one of the potential downfalls of doing it one by one is that um, I don't think it happens very often, but you could be influenced by the votes ahead of you. Um, mm. And mm -hmm. you know, and I, when I was chair, I asked Debbie to um, randomize the order so that nobody was ever one. You know, we were just switching it up. But I think even better would be just everybody voting at the same time. Not that that's been a huge issue. Well. Uh why don't everybody give it thought? We'll, we'll put it on the next, on the regular meeting. We'll put it as an agenda item, as an action item, and we'll take a vote at that time. In the meantime, we'll stay with until then. 
Is everybody fine with that? Yep. Yeah, okay. sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Uh, Derek, you've got the floor. Uh, superintendent evaluation timeline. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I was tasked with uh, helping facilitate conversation around the superintendent uh, evaluation process. That's what we'll kind of work through tonight. Um, where I'd like to start, just an overview. Uh, I think it's important just to realize and talk about like the why, uh, just for, for us to kind of go back to basics and understand like what is the point of doing the superintendent evaluation. Um, we'll talk about our responsibilities. And again, I realize there's a uh, tremendous amount of experience on the board. Uh, they've been through the process before, but I think it's worth just revisiting uh, as well. Uh, we'll talk about kind of 30,000 foot view timeline that um, OSBA and COSA has laid out in their uh, handbook, and then we'll talk more specifically uh, about what our timeline will most likely look like over the next year. Um, in preparation for this, uh, I looked heavily at OSBA's uh, workbook as well as um, a couple other states that are kind of ranked in the top 10 for K through 12 education. I uh, looked at Massachusetts, New York, and, and Florida, uh, and I'll talk briefly about those, but there was definitely some consistency with what we're doing here uh, as, as opposed, uh, in addition to uh, around the country. And then my goal, and where we'll probably spend the bulk of our time is talking about that pre-evaluation, figuring out what our process will look like. Uh, my hope is that uh, by the end of tonight, we can kind of come together. I'll take some detailed notes, put all that together, then at our next meeting, we'll come back and, and make a final decision and, and vote on the, on the process. Um, this quote I found in the OSBA COSA um, uh, workbook that I thought was pretty aspirational and, and I, I thought it was a good starting point for us. And it talks about uh, when superintendents and school boards work effectively together over the long term, their schools and students do better. Um, I didn't find like the specific stats to support that, but I thought it was a good starting point as, a, like, as an aspirational like this is why we um, put so much emphasis on having a good relationship with our superintendent. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that's going to take a while. Oh. <laughs> oh, my. That's what happens when you give me the PowerPoint clicker. Daniel, can you fix that for me? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so a couple things, again, as, as I was looking through the um, the workbook and was taking some time to kind of really, you know, wrestle with like what is our role. There's a couple things that uh, I thought were important. One, I think it's really important, especially for this year where we're at, to provide clear guidance uh, for our superintendent, and I think that will come during our conversation around standards. Um, I try to put myself in her shoes a little bit, and, and coming into a district that has some issues. Um, I think it would be very easy to try and start dealing with all the fires that pop up. And so I think tonight, as we have that conversation, being really thoughtful about what the direction, what the guidance um, that we want to give our superintendent moving forward so that she has a clear picture um, and understanding of kind of our expectations collectively. I like the, the old acronym, uh, SMART standards, SMART goals. Um, there were a couple other states that had this specifically in their workbook. Um, and I think there's a couple here that really stick out to me that I think is worth um, thinking about as we work through. Um, for the superintendent timeline, we're talking basically from now to kind of March-ish that she's gonna have to start producing the artifacts of evidence and, and those types of things. So making sure that the standards we come up with tonight are both achievable and then achievable within a specific time frame. Um, that was something as I, I looked through the standards, um, some of them are like multi-year objectives and so just as we're having that conversation tonight to make sure that you know whatever we put forward obviously superintendent will be part of that discussion but make sure they're achievable within the time frame that we're looking at uh, so 30,000 foot view timeline uh, this is where we'll spend the bulk of our work time is that pre-evaluation uh, piece uh, in the materials that I'm sure everybody's had a chance to look at uh, OSBA and COSA, and again, consistent with other states, talk about regular check-in meetings. Uh, they generally suggest those are at least quarterly, but um, I think our experience so far with the superintendent, we're getting that at regular board meetings, and that can be part of the, the conversation as well about um, when we want to see like those regular 
uh, check-in points with whatever the standards and goals end up being. Uh, that March deadline, uh, we can have some flexibility, but that'll be the point in time we're starting to gather the information where we're starting to push out uh, collectively to board um, for our evaluations. Tonight we'll talk about target feedback survey. So that's kind of the 30,000 uh, foot view timeline. Uh, this is really small to read, so I'll hit on just a couple highlights. And uh, these aren't date specific yet because I know we're still finalizing our board meeting um, meetings for the next year. Uh, so a couple highlights. Uh, that second one back, again, my goal for tonight is to uh, solidify the standards, gather that information, and then put that cohesively so that at our next board meeting in September, we can uh, make a vote. It'll give us time to kind of sit and wrestle and make sure we're comfortable with whatever the standards and the goals are. Um, the third one down talks about just, again, those are the um, interim progress reports, and we can have a conversation about whether we want those to be on a more regular basis. Um, and then January is another important month, because that'll be, uh, if we decide to do targeted feedback, that's probably when we'll start looking at that. So uh, we'll hit on this later. Again, this isn't finalized yet, but just a couple highlights. Okay, so uh, again, just as a reminder for us and then uh, just our community as well, this is the five-part evaluation tool that OSBA and COSA recommend. And again, in, in the light research I did looking at other states, it was pretty consistent uh, with using an um, evaluation tool that was very similar. Uh, and again, so tonight, what I hope to come away with is for us to collectively come up with the standards uh, that we would like to um, put forward any specific goals uh, that we think might be uh, worthwhile, then we can talk about um, you know, the last three as well. So that's really kind of the, the goal for tonight. All right, this will be the, the last bit that I'll um, discuss and then I'll kind of push it out. So on the left there, you, you have the eight standards um, that OSB and COSA recommend. Um, and it, as I was looking at that, th that's a lot. That is a, a lot of standards. Uh, several other states have kind of honed this down a little bit. And so uh, the only kind of seeds I really want to plant is for us to really think about the number of standards, like how many we actually want to have for this uh, period of time, and then make sure that we prioritize those standards. Um, and so, you know, when I look at this, there's a couple that really jump out at me, uh, specifically for the season and the spot that our district is in. I think it's gonna be really important for us to hone in on some very clear standards and objectives. So again, as the superintendent is working through that, um, she's not like overwhelmed by eight different standards of you know visionary ethics and policy and governance and all those different things. Uh, I know she's completely capable, but again, just for us as a board to give clear direction. And then the one thing that struck me as I looked at these standards I would like to see something specifically with the word students in it. Um, a lot of it's there, it's buried in other parts of it, but again, being student focused, if we can somehow work that word in there just to show that it's at the forefront of all of our minds collectively, um, I think is important. So uh, where I'd like to go next is just to open up a conversation. I, I do have all eight of those standards listed out specifically, but I thought maybe um, just turn it over for a conversation around number of standards, and then we can kind of unpack uh, from there. So, I have two responses that I thought of while you were speaking. Um, I agree. I, I went through all of these, and I thought in this year, do we really need to have the visionary district leadership? Mm -hmm. Because um, it talks about renewing the. Um, strategic plan I don't think we're going to be doing that this year I think it, that would be a project for next year yeah so I mean that. that that's just something that like I think right now that's not a huge priority we're trying to really get a hold of some some financial things so um, that that would be one that to me just stands out as easy to let go um, and then, then I totally agree about the student bit. Um, student achievement, actually, I would like expand that. Um, everything that we do should be designed to improve student achievement. So, and, and you're right, Derek, like when you go through these standards, if I did a control F and, and 
focused on students, there wouldn't be very many. Yeah. So um, hmm. I agree. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Jennifer. I, I look at eight this year and I go, let's pare that down, number one. I agree with the visionary piece of it. Kim, no offense to you. I know you're a very visionary person. <laughs> uh, in the short time we've, we've talked and worked together, but I, I think at this point, um, that, like we talked about, it's probably a next year kind of thing to really start working on the vision and the redoing the, the strategic visioning plan. Um, you know, we, we may, you know, want to knock that one out of there. Um, the, the two that always kind of like get mixed up, I remember, not mixed up, but like kind of blended, were like number three and four, the inclusive culture and then the culturally responsive, culturally responsive instructional leadership and improvement. When you dig down and look at the standards within each or the qualifiers within each standard, they're they so kind of overlap. Similar. And I remember yeah. we were doing the evaluation last year, there was a lot of overlap and kind of confusion. Um, uh, you know, I think, I think that inclusive district culture, when I look at it, looks at more of, you know, to staff, to, to our, you know, to our, um, to our teachers, to our, all of our, our folks, out, you know, in our students, but then, and then the other one is more of like the instructional based, right? And I agree, how do, can we, can we take that fourth bullet point and talk about instructional leadership and, and improvement in student achievement instead of just improvement, right? I think that'd be a great spot to put the student focus. Um, and then, you know, obviously community and communication is huge this year. Organizational management with all the changes in staffing that we had is huge. Financial management probably should be number one right now. <laughs> um, uh, the policy governance advocacy, Kim, I know you're always working with the, the you know, and the governor on especially advocating for funding and everything. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to, you know, hold her back from that because I know she's got a lot of ties on it, but maybe that's kind of like a, a lesser one out of the eight, you know. Um, uh, again, just my opinion on it. But, but yeah, I think, I think if maybe we, I don't want to say eliminate, but just kind of shelf the first one this year, and then add students on the fourth one, or student improvement instead of just improvement. I think that might. Home, home well, I have, a th I have a thought just real quick on, and Jennifer, when you said like visionary district leadership, I would, you know, like I'm trying to think how I would fill this out. And I, if I left it here, like one of my things, like a uh, visionary district leadership, well, I kind of feel like Kim's doing that right now mm -hmm. in a sense of like, okay, this is what our staff needs. This is what our students need. We're shelving everything and we're just going to make sure they're okay. And in my, in, in my kind of, mindset that is kind of visionary and that is district leadership of being visionary where we are right now if we mean visionary as thinking down the road mm -hmm. so like how do we define visionary mm -hmm. because yeah. right now mm -hmm. I would be very I'm very happy with I was in the high school a couple times this week I tell you what guys there's a different feel in this building there's some happy people I'm seeing smiles it feels good to come here and have people not be so beat up so thank you that's great no I'm thinking in the in the um, realm of the strategic vision that includes community focus. So I, I totally, totally agree. I think Kim is choosing the exact right things to focus on. Um, it's based on her personal vision and what she sees needs to be done. And I, I guess I see the... So how we define it, I guess, is mm -hmm. what she might be thinking she's doing here and versus how we're going to grade her might be separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I vision think, is... I yeah. think it's important, too, that we're... Uh, when one thing that comes up in the line as we're talking here, the visionary district leadership piece, it's not like we're forgetting it, mm -hmm. but what we're not doing is setting it up so goals are written mm -hmm. specifically to it. Because when you really, when you really get to thinking about most those other seven, it requires uh, visionary ability to be involved in all those you know you're mm -hmm. you're uh, managing fiscally not just for now but for down the road setting mm -hmm. things up uh policy you know all these different things have have a visionary piece to them but by eliminating it as a specific standard uh, we eliminate the need of you know goals written to it so to speak but we aren't forgetting it I played around with um, a couple standards that it was either Massachusetts, New York, or Florida, or a combination they had, uh, and it was they had foster vision, culture, and instructional leadership, and I added that is good for students. And so it kind of took a combination of what we had there 
and then for specific descriptors, um, discuss leadership actions, staffing and resources are clearly aligned to a student achievement focused vision and that, and that vision is evident in the school culture. So kind of to the point of, of you're talking about like the here right now, you're seeing it, uh, that different feel. Um, it spoke to consistently promotes effective instructional programs with high expectations for student learning outcomes. District goals are systematically aligned throughout the district with a focused plan for student achievement and school improvement supported by resources. So it was kind of a blending of, um, you know, visionary district leadership, inclusive district culture, touches a little bit on the professional norms. So there's, maybe there's a combination that can be, can be made there if some folks like that visionary piece and they're like here, the here right now, um, you know, that was one, one option I saw in, in some other uh, states where they kind of combine those, mm -hmm. um, a couple of those standards that we had. They most other states paired visionary district leadership in the inclusive district culture and ethics, so they end up with from like eight to five or six. I just want to second uh, Aaron's thing. I, I do think we could come up with a way to combine three and four some way. Because I remember doing it last time, I was really struggling with separating those two. Mm -hmm. Don't, I'm just, I would second his. Uh, so let me, let me go to the descriptors for, I guess I don't want to move forward. Mm -hmm. Since we're kind of talking about three and four, I thought I might just pull up the specific descriptors. Yeah, do it. All right, so standard three, uh, inclusive district culture. You can see the descriptors there. Uh, I'll kind of hit on maybe the, just a couple, but develops and maintains a supportive, equitable, culture, responsive, and inclusive district culture. Uh, I think that's gonna be huge for us, again, moving into this year. Uh, evaluates, cultivates, and advocates for equitable access to safe and nurturing schools and the opportunities and resources necessary to support the successful and well-being of each student. Um, bumping over to four, you can kind of see the descriptors there. Uh, elevates, designs, fosters, and implements coherent systems of curriculum, instruction, supports, assessment, so on and so forth. Um, I'm gonna skip down to the third bullet point, manages an appropriate system of assessments, data collection, and analysis. That starts to get, as you look at the two, it starts to get into kind of like more systems. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so what I'm hearing is we like some kind of combination potentially of four and three Three. Yeah, it's just a, it's just if you're going to be in a culturally responsive district, how would you not also be inclusive if you're being culturally responsive? But seeing how they break it down, one definitely has a student focus, and the other is a staff. I see your point about bringing this light, student light or light to the students, Derek. Not a whole lot of student language here. The one thing on standard three that um, I circled was. Uh, develops and maintains a supportive, equitable, culturally responsive, and inclusive district culture. Um, I don't know. That seemed important to me. And also one that we would need more feedback on from, like we've talked about mm -hmm. having direct reports right. do some kind of survey. Well, I think both of these are the two that I remember, like, we, we felt like we could get better outside input on this mm -hmm. past year. You know, um, you know, obviously the targeted feedback survey was not as helpful two years ago. Um, but some kind of survey, especially in these areas, could, you know, um, for those that are, that are doing it every day with our staff, you know, and, and curriculum and which these roll up to, it would be great to get the, the feedback from them on these. Okay. Um, so to kind of keep the conversation going, uh, mm -hmm. we like some type of combination of four and three with a couple of those main bullet points that both Jennifer and Aaron hit. Um, or we could leave them, you know, it's. The, the, and one thing too that I was thinking of is instead of um, combining, although we could still combine, is just knocking down some of the bullet Okay. points the descriptors underneath okay mm -hmm. well let's let's do this let's go um, I thought we might be able to not necessarily circumvent but let's go standard by standard just okay. um, might make it a little smoother all right so standard one we've kind of touched on a little bit but visionary district leadership uh, you have the descriptors 
uh, up there. We've kind of touched on it. And Josh, you kind of brought this light in two different contexts, the vision of right here, right now. And then we have the kind of vision, like where are we going five years from now? Um, so maybe if we were to streamline this, it would, it would be more like we're looking at the next 12 months kind of vision, like this school year. It's a short term vision. Yeah. It actually, all three of those bullets really are, to me, describe the strategic vision plan. Yeah. And if we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a question for your more senior members. How often do you guys change in a strategic plan? Is that something every five years? It's supposed to be five. Five, five. Yeah. five years. Okay. Ours goes through 2025, but, but much of it is, def is uh, not in action anymore. So parts of it we're not really working on anymore, like guaranteed viable curriculum. That's a whole section of our. And, and not that teachers aren't still working on that type of work inside their building, mm -hmm. but um, that the complexity of that has changed a bit. I mean, I when it comes to vision, you know, to me, I'm like, I, I think it's important, but I think it's a very short-term vision. And just restate it clearly for me, it's we have a 12-month vision, or maybe a two, a 24-month vision to get us out of the current bind that we're in successfully you know without losing sight of these other long-term visions from the past but you know when I, when I think of the deep cuts that people are the struggle that this current school year is going to be for a lot of students staff and parents it's you know it's going to be a struggle just to get through this in in a position that allows us to then get a long-term view mm -hmm. that's that's my view of it so but I can be you know I can be swayed either way but how we define vision is going to be important yeah. when we judge. And, and we'll get to it in a, in a yes. second. It's on yeah. the, I think it's the seventh, or sorry, the six bullet points talks about effective organizational management. I think that's probably what we're talking about a little mm -hmm. bit more is the organizational yeah. management of if money comes back and we can add it in staff and like all those decisions, like it's not kind of the 30,000 foot view vision, but it's like how are we managing the district in this kind of period that we're currently in. So yeah. um, some mixed feelings on standard one, we'll kind of keep going. Uh, standard two, ethics, professional norms, a couple descriptors there. Um, as I read some, some of these, they were also kind of like, like we have to put in a descriptor about making ethical and legal recommendation <laughs> of the board. Like, um, yeah, that seems like a no brainer, uh, but that's in there. Uh, ensures ethical decisions, cultivates professional norms and culture including integrity, fairness, transparency, trust, equity, collaboration, and perseverance, um, models ethical behavior. Um, so, I think, sorry, Derek. No, go ahead. go ahead. So this one to me was, is kind of most, just how I'm wired is my most important one. It goes back to something Owen had said a long time ago about truthfulness. You know, so I was like, well, where, would, where does this fit if like somebody like is telling a half truth or maybe withholding information? or tries to, or as we you know, have all seen you know, in, in relationships that we have where somebody has a short temper and gets hot headed and blows up. And like where would that go in like, cause I feel like how that person behaves uh, sets a standard for everybody around them. And where do we put that? Like that would either go in our communications or community relations, but I look at these ethics and professional norms. For me, like how one behaves in public, how one behaves in private, or how they do communication with individual interpersonal relationships is huge for me. I didn't really know how to grade that. And then on a 30,000 foot view of all this, well, largely, this, this, is very, this, is, this process sucks. It's really hard to sit down, like what kind of person am I gonna be? Am I gonna be honest? Well, I don't want to hurt their feelings, and I want to give them, like, this is a very difficult thing to do. So, again, if, if that's kind of my difficulty in this whole process, and then when it talks to ethics and professional norms, it really goes back to what Owen said to me. And how do we do that? Yeah. The, the Does that fall underneath this, probably? I, Truth I mean, says trust, transparency. You've got a couple of them up there, and as I look at this again, just kind of right now, and thinking about again where the district's at, um, we have a community that 
that loves to be part of the conversation, the collaboration. So I think that's an important piece. Um, our community has asked for transparency in a, in a bunch of different uh, capacities over the last you know several months. So um, this originally wasn't necessarily like my top three, but as I kind of like wrestle with that first descriptor, um, it may may be worth like keeping in um, our standards for evaluation. I think you were thinking of maybe modifying it. Not modifying it. I don't. Uh, putting it as a, as a lesser priority um, <clears throat> because there's for me there's three of these that like are at the top job. yeah job. okay um, I agree I, that first bullet I think is important mm -hmm. um, and again that's another one where I think we need um, that outside source of information are we have we decided if we're doing this have you decided if we're doing this executive session or open? I think she can decide at the Later. last. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because yeah. it's usually kind of that executive really. session, and then you share a summary at the oh, open yeah. session mm -hmm. afterwards. Okay. That's how I would do it. That's how I did it last time. Which, to your point, Josh allows us as evaluators for our one employee to mm -hmm. be a little bit more candid. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and you know, again, these are personnel discussions, which mm -hmm. generally for any employee are done um, mm. in a private setting. Yeah. So okay, so it sounds like we like standard two. We'll keep that. Uh, moving on to standard three and four, which we've touched on um, a little bit. And then if I'm hearing everyone, it sounds like potentially combining these in, in some capacity, have the descriptors up there. But um, you've got develops and maintains a supportive, equitable, culturally responsible responsive and inclusive district culture, uh, evaluates, cultivates, and advocates for equitable access to safe and nurturing schools, and the opportunities and resources necessary to support the success and well-being of each student, uh, ensures equitable, inclusive, and culturally responsive instructional and behavioral support practices among teachers and admin and staff, and then taking a look at four. We'll go back to that one real quick, because how would we right now do number two if it says resources necessary to support the success and well-being of each student. I think financially, we haven't put Kim in the greatest position to do that. Can I speak to that for a second? Yeah, of yeah. course. I really feel like I need to chime in here for Please. a second. Yeah. So the one you mentioned with instructional leadership, that is my special gift to my district that I serve, is the ability to impact student achievement and serve my teachers. And I am so compromised by our current budget situation with a million dollar ending fund balance mm -hmm. that I've got teachers sitting in this room right now that have 32, 30, I don't even know where she's at, 34. class size wise. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. I mean, I, I, I feel for them, like I've taught large class sizes like that. And so like my ability to, to walk into her classroom and see powerful teaching like I know she can do is compromised by our budget mm -hmm. and what happened previously prior to my superintendency. And so for, for us to look at instructional leadership this year, we are in pure survival mode. I am looking for $300,000 right now. I'm digging everywhere for it. And I'm telling you, we had a meeting with our administrators today and it is nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Like I can't figure out where to pull it from. We had a recent reduction to the ending fund balance of $500,000, and that was a state school fund adjustment. adjustment. Yep, and that came in July. We also received a notice from ODE that we had a $92,000 uh, reduced in the high school success fund. And so when we look at these areas, I need you to understand mm. that there are gonna be areas in here that we don't hit this year and that's that's one of them right there I, I i will do everything in my ability to make sure we have high student achievement but like today my best solution for our current fte situation for that is impacting my elementary teachers was for me to teach a class at the high school and send someone with an elementary license to their building that was my brilliant solution without asking you to allow me to spend part of our reserves that aren't really the reserves we're supposed to have. Uh, we should have six and a half million dollars in an ending fund balance, not one million. 
I just, I have to be very frank with you about the dire situation we're in, and I know I've emailed all of you, and many of you have called me and given your input, and I, I appreciate it so much, but this is a serious problem that needs, I mean, you, the number one area in this is financial management, effective financial management, and how do we organize our staff so that it, so that it covers what we need, because these are kids we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And, and all of these standards should be student-centered. There should be like an umbrella of student-centeredness over the top of all of that. And it's really hard for me to look at these people right now. Mm. And, and I'm trying really hard. Oh, mm -hmm. no doubt. But we it's know. not easy. I, I really appreciate you saying that. And, and I don't want to like, I want to have a conversation. But for me, there's kind of, there's three that rise to the top. Effective financial management, effective organizational management, communication, community relations, because I think if you look at it, the most, for this season that we're in, the most important thing in my opinion is the financial management. And then if you have effective organizational management of a school district, most of that other stuff is included. And so those are just yep. additional subcategories that we're kind of spelling out. And then the communication piece is gonna be huge because we have to explain the reason you have 34 plus is because our financial management is mm -hmm. not in the situation that it should be. So, um, I don't. That's I, where I'm. Very good. I, uh, you know, I, I totally concur. Uh, you know, some of those, as as I'm sure, was you're saying, Kim, and and I realize, and I think we all realize, a couple of those are almost pie in the sky when we don't have the resources that that we have. And if we're going to get real about this, this is this is a standard and an evaluation for this year is what we're putting together. We're not putting it together for forever, for forever uh, perpetuity. And and I think uh, I think a point is well taken by uh, Derek's mentioned it and what you said, Kim, as far as us getting it focused down. To uh, a couple three there and doing it well and I, I think what we need to come up with that we maybe don't have there and it fits what you were saying we needed to incorporate and that's getting that piece in there about students and some some kind of uh, standard or, or some wording something uh, along the lines of doing the best to meet these within our means uh, so to speak. We could create our own standard. Yeah. We don't have to follow and, that exact list. And within our means, I mean, uh, so we... Can we <coughs> add a cover letter to the beginning of the evaluation, say it gets pulled, and say the cover letter, Interim Superintendent Kim Kellison was hired this date with these pre-existing stuff, and Superintendent Kim Kellison you know, a little historical background that would kind of maybe clarify what follows behind it. Is that, I mean, that would, for me, would make a lot of sense of why, what's come, what follows is. Well, maybe we could do that, but the thought that I've been having, I guess, is that anytime I evaluate somebody to a set of standards, that evaluation is going to be colored by the circumstances that they face, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. I think Kim can still be very successful even though we still have problems in our district and we have needs and we have, um, you know, we fall short in places. That's not gonna necessarily be her fault, right? All right. Um, so I think, you know, from my evaluation standpoint, I'm gonna be looking at all of these, you know, how did she do in light of the circumstances that she faced? Yeah. I'm just thinking from a third party that would not be from Silverton and say she wants to have it five, ten years down the road or wants to give it to somebody, they're going to want to know maybe some context to the scores that she got. And that will be in the yeah, but I guess what I'm saying is my score, is that, that's even though, even in, even in light of the fact that maybe some goals weren't achieved, I could still score very highly mm -hmm. if I feel like, you know, the efforts that she made and the, the decisions she made and, and the ethics that she displayed, et cetera, you know, all those things, um, she got the best result possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I guess I, that's kind of what I look and, at. And how, how has she done with what we've given, right. so to speak? 
And remember, that's kind of what the summit of evaluation is for, too. Like, that's where the context gets put in to oh, okay. so the, 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 yes. the why yes. behind the what. I the whole process. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, so yeah. the why behind the what, right? So you could say, look, we, you know, evaluate you. Uh, let's just say the standard. We give her a four, even though it was a just, you know, trying to figure out and keep her head above water and, you know, at given the situation, Kim did the best job she could. So in this area, we scored her very high because, like you said, Owen, she did the best given the, the cards she was dealt, right? Um, so it's, it's relative to the situation, and that's where the narrative comes in in the summative evaluation. Okay. I just wanted to say that I was considering your proposal um, because I, I think it's rational. The one thing on the communication and community relations things is that um, I think descriptor number one is super essential. Um, the rest of them, again, like it talks about going to the county, regional, state level, mm -hmm. um, civic and local government, which I know she's already reached out to some, some groups. Um, but I guess just to me that if we do focus on communication, mm -hmm. let's be really clear about it because I don't think those thir three bullets are necessarily where we should be focusing a ton. I mean, they're all important, but. I actually do those things anyway, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. like, so you're, yeah, you're good with it. I've already been busy doing all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what I wondered about the advocacy days. thing. Like, how do you feel, Kim, about the advocacy standard? Um, I've, for our district and school and community, I mean, everyone is watching us. And so they want to hear about our struggle at the state level. I mean, I think it's important to have those ongoing narratives, it's important for me to build the connections I already have because there will be problems that I won't have an immediate answer to. And like I've already called five superintendents about this uh, staffing issue we're having right now. Where could I find, they have no advice for me, five people. Mm -hmm. No advice on how to, how to manage this with, this with that type of any fund balance. Um, so I think that, um, you know, being in those circles and being part of those conversations, I think it helps our district. I think it helps the state funding level. And I think it helps shift the narrative in the district to one that about what positive things we're doing in the district. Like I was just interviewed by the newspaper for an hour on my way home. Um, you know, and I asked her to focus on positive things in the district as we move forward instead of reflecting on the past. Because we could spend a lot of time back there. Um, you know, and I've done a lot of analysis on that and, and what, you know, went haywire, but um, I think moving forward is really essential for us and being as transparent as we possibly can. So having community forums, meeting with people, like being active in the community, like I met with the Silverton Police Force today. I'm never going to stop doing those things because that would delete my power and my ability as a superintendent to move us forward and whether we're talking about vision for 24 months or we're, we're talking about it for five years I'm already thinking about when we go for a bond and all those things so like telling me to restrict it down to a year I'm never going to do that because that's just not how I think so Got it. okay um, I mean you could you could work with all of those standards and it would be fine I think the ones that Derek talked about are really powerful standards that are really important to us right now all right so, so what about this because I'm hearing, you know, kind of us kind of go back and forth. You know, do we limit? Do we just keep them all? What, what if we keep all of the standards, but we can, you know, rephrase some of them, keep them, just knowing going into this year that we're going to have priorities on, say, like we talked about, maybe three of them, mm -hmm. but keep all of them in place. Some of them may be lighter in our commentary and our ratings than others, right? Some of them may be more focused because that's what we need right now. But there's so much <coughs> intertwining, right? And again, those bullet points under each standard are descriptors. They're not like you have to hit every one of these in order to get a good score, per se, in that area. Those are just descriptors as to what that looks like or what good looks like. So, so maybe we do keep them all, but kind of like highlight maybe three, like, like these are the ones that we really want to kind of like hone in on and that we would hope that like maybe Kim's goals would be based off of or really focusing on, but still because there's so much overlap as we've kind of talked mm -hmm. about that, why not just keep them all? Do you reorder them in the order of importance or? I, I think we have flexibility in that. Um, and I don't know, and others can speak to this, I don't know if the, how they're ordered um, 
specifically matters. It's just how my brain works. Yeah. I yeah. see one, and uh, but I don't think that's necessarily. No, I don't. Right. I don't think they're given one. I don't think they're eight. weighted uh, the way they were put together necessarily. Right. I mean, or like, new do they need yeah. to be either? Tom, you're gonna say something. Well, I mean, context is important as you're evaluating this, and I know in a, a lot of these descriptors it says develop. Well, if we don't give her time and resources to develop whatever we, you know, some descriptor that said develop, let's see if I can find one uh, in there. Sorry, but I think it was, but uh, yeah. if we don't give her resources, and, and, and then we evaluate her and say, well, you didn't develop this plan, like it said on standard descriptor two under standard 7.3, you know, <laughs> that's, that's not fair. You know, so it context matters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would, you know, I kind of, I kind of been intrigued by Aaron's suggest, you know, focus on these three points, financial management um, and, and, and others. But, but those are the things we need, you know, focus, direct focus on these two or three or four items to get us through this immediate 12 month crisis, you know, and then we'll, that's where the core of the evaluation is, is gonna come in my, in we also mind. have to think about, um, sorry, Tom, I didn't mean no, to. No, 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 you're fine. I was, I was, yeah. Um, it's our job to give feedback. Yeah. Is it more appropriate for us to have a smaller number of yeah. standards in order to give well, feedback? Well, well, for instance, I would say these are the three or four that are, that are most important, and we're going to give you feedback, but don't lose sight of these other two or three. These are important, too, just to be pondering about when you're driving down the road and having yep. a conversation with, but these are the ones we're going to be really thinking about. You know, fiscal management is going to be everything. That's, that's, that's our number one, I think. I think it's a consensus on that. Um, and, you, you know, and then go down from there. But that's, that's the way I, I see it, you know. Um, and a lot of it depends on, on Kim's strengths. I mean, she, she likes to rub shoulders with community members and, and leadership groups and things like that. So that's just doesn't sound like it's going to be a hard thing for her to do anyway. No, um, I can't stop talking. It's yeah, so, <laughs> so um, I mean, we, yeah, you know, we can tighten some. I, I, I don't like redundant languages and in, in in some of these bullet points, but, but for the most part, I, I kind of, for now, I'm intrigued by the point of saying focus on, we're going to focus on these three. Or four, or five, something. six, and seven. So, well, pick mm. pick, pick a number. You know, pick a, let's 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 narrow it down that way. Pick a few to focus on, and not forget that these others just in, keep those off to the side, and let's not forget those others are very important. Well, and again, remember they're intertwined. Yes, right, correct. We, like good if effective organizational management mm -hmm. is also going to spur an inclusive district culture yes. and being a culturally responsive instructional leadership, right? Yes, and vice versa. So there's a lot of overlap here that will feed others um, but if we like keep the let's just say keep the eight but let's say hey three of these we, we really want to make sure that we're spending time in just by nature of what's before us or for whatever we decide maybe that's where we land on again I think getting into the Getting into the weeds on the bullet point descriptors, I think that could, that might be a distraction for us. Those are again are descriptors to what this good a standard looks like and what how we should evaluate. Right? Those are there for us to to do that. Um, and it's not like we have to start editing each sentence on those descriptors to see if we really like you know really want them in this year or not. I think you make a good point, and I, I'm taking your point. Thank you. So if I'm hearing everybody correctly. Our thought is keeping the eight as is, but placing emphasis on communication, community relations, effective organization, and this, not this order, just some reason how they are now, effective organizational management and effective financial management would be what we would place emphasis on for this year. I, I guess I wanted to want to know, yeah, I'm in favor of narrowing it down to those three, um, but what does place emphasis mean I mean I, I I don't think she's gonna forget the rest of them I I, I don't I, I'm, I'm not, not gonna forget the rest of them. <laughs> I'm not yeah. concerned you're, about that you're, Kim, you're gonna be putting you're gonna you're gonna be the one uh, addressing your personal you know for your position goals to these standards what do you feel comfortable with having from us well how I've done this before in the past was um, 
I chose some goals that I thought were important to my community. So things that would serve teachers so um, and other staff members. And, um, and then I built goals around those things. So I took a lot of feedback um, when I did my last goals uh, for my district. And so I, you know, and I, and I have taken some feedback from teachers recently. Um, and so th some of the things I've done already have been based on their feedback. We need more time. We need to not focus on this huge curriculum project anymore. We need to dissolve that partnership. Those, those are things that I took from the 131 respondents that, that filled out my survey. And so I think that it makes sense for me to take, in, in this case, I think your direction about those three specific areas that you think are super important for me to build goals around those. But in those goals, always be mindful of what your staff needs and what your kids need and what your students need. Um, because I think that we are here to, to help, you know, those folks achieve more. And if our goals, you know, if I had just a, a, look, a line about, you know, creating a budget, well, that, that's not the, the, I mean, one of the bullet points was create a budget and, yeah. you know, that's not the answer <laughs> here. We have to manage the, the aftermath, which is what we're doing right now. It's a, it's a daily fire in our office and it takes all these people to put it out uh, including all the admin from the other building I mean like I had to bring all the admin in today for an emergency meeting so you know like really trying to prioritize what we're doing and how we manage these difficult things because they're not th these are the hardest problems we've ever had and they're the hardest and there's more of them I'm than, more of them this summer than in my entire tenure administrative career combined Let's let it sink in for a second. My whole admin career, and I was a high school principal and vice principal, which is the, there's a lot of things going on there. Um, so I. So I, I, I mean, I, I guess kind of what I'm, when I, when I think about the ones I'm wanting to focus on, they're ones that I can measure. Yeah. That's I'd why, like to, I've, you yeah, know, and, and then we can yeah. really easily mirror that back out to the public that these, you know, the fund to balance the fiscal situation at the beginning of the year was this, and at the end of the year it's this. And maybe, you know, organizational management, we combine this, we streamline, we can measure, we can, things that are easy to um, uh, report back. That, I guess that's my, my engineer mind at work. Yeah, that's um, linear, yeah. But, you know, it's not that those aren't, but those are just harder to articulate and measure and, you know, and um, so that's, that's why I lean that way. I have no issues with kind of how it is with the rest of the state. And if, you know, we want to say, hey, we're, Kim, we're really looking at these three in particular and just still doing the rest of them, yeah. see what's wrong with that. I mean, if, I, I guess if, if you don't, I mean, if yeah. you're supportive of just leaving them all there, then. One of the things, though, is like when we're doing this, when we, a year, like, well, not a year from now, relatively soon, yeah. is like, Seven oh, months. you said the financial balance when we did the budget, the ending fund was supposed to be this. We have to remember that they shorted us 500000 and another $92,000, <laughs> so we can't blame her. Like, well, you're not where we said we should be. So there's probably context in all this stuff that we have to have good memories of how we ended up where we're at. Well, and you'll, you'll have so much information that there'll be no question and about and that. And will be part of the know. process, yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. Explanation. Of, uh, and that, that's actually a problem that I generally have with this effective financial management standard. And again, it's the bullets, and yeah. maybe I'm getting too hung up on the bullets. Yeah. Um, but the budget committee process happens after the evaluation is due. And we don't have one to look back on so it's it's that that's always a hard one hmm. but that would be like that for any superintendent you'll have yes. quarterly and monthly you know you'll have a financial report at each board meeting we're going to put together a finance committee and you'll have a very good idea about where we stand there won't be any you'll in february you'll go oh we know where we're headed and love the governor's budget by then i mean it'll be pretty obvious by then you know, we talked about, you know, as you put up the slide kind of towards the end of after standard eight about getting into the goals process, right, which feed, feeds Kim goals. And I, and I know that I'm preaching the choir on this one for you, Kim, because this, again, you've been through this a few times as a superintendent, yeah. so this isn't your first rodeo, but like, it, I don't want to see more than three goals. 
<laughs> honestly for you right now like and, and yeah, again, you do what you need you. to do but like i think keeping it as simple as possible this year is is which i know you'll do is is absolutely paramount oh, this year they're well done yeah that that's a good number anyway. yeah so that sounds good aaron <laughs> <laughs> what are they saying Eric? you're good at this are they saying trim it down to three I, I think uh, what I'm hearing from everybody collectively <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and Jennifer right, right, summarizing uh, as well as keep the eight emphasis on go back to it here emphasis on and probably in this order effective financial management even though all the specific descriptors in there we probably you know potentially add to those effective organizational management communication and community relations and then keep the other ones because it sounds like that's just who you are and you're going to do some of that work anyway. Um, but for us, that's again, just to recognize that's what we're as, as a board, mm -hmm. we're going to kind of put more emphasis and I guess guidance on focusing on, yeah. on those. Emphasis on the feedback. I would, you know, on those yeah. areas. Are we going to talk about that at some point? Feedback? Yeah, so that's, uh, if there's. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, we're, we'll hit that next. So I think we're good on the standards and kind of move mm -hmm. past that. Um, and then Kim, just want to talk about, would now be an appropriate time just to discuss if you had put any thought into goals and what those might be. And we can maybe turn over to you just because I think you had at least some initial thoughts after sitting in the chair for a little while. Yeah, I do, I do have some thoughts. So. Um, Stabilizing the district is, you know, my number one goal right now. Um, getting us to a point where we can welcome students back and, f you know, feel comfortable with how we're doing that and what it looks like. Um, that has been our main priority all summer. Uh, but that, you know, getting, getting the financial piece of it, there's so many unknowns in that realm. And, you know, we've had a couple of hits. We've had a couple of savings. Um, but you know it's like a it's for what we can see it's a four hundred thousand dollar drop and so that is just really you know that's the net basically um so when you t when you look at the financial part of it like i will definitely have a goal around uh fiscal responsibility and i think that um when you look back at my past performance as a superintendent, like my last district, my ending fund balance was 16% the first year I was there. So I, I have a real understanding of what it takes to, to and we use, and we use some of that for capital projects. So we had some big projects we needed to do and we, we had to add some money in a couple of places. So, so there were reasons why it was larger than normal, but shooting for 8% is the norm. And I think if we could build a budget for next year that had an 8% ending fund balance, that would be amazing. That would mean that the state school fund came in, in where it did. But we have other things that will complicate that. So we have to consider long range projections and um, you know, PERS liability and other things that will impact us and empl empl employment costs and you know, all those different fluctuating things. So there's a, there's, that's a really complicated thing that um, you know we're going to be tasked with explaining all year because we are talking about budget over and over and over again so the the fiscal responsibility is going to be huge this year mm -hmm. um, and then I you know I would love to do some work on early literacy and some different things in the in the district but and see where these guys are at and and because I'm really passionate about that and their reading scores are amazing so I'm not worried about it but um, that's not that's we don't have time for that right now like i'm going to rely on our teachers to take care of that for now so we're going to go back into our building we're trying to really build um you know systems for teachers this year that allow them to turn back to their colleagues back to their building and do professional learning communities that that you know talk about student data and some of those things that they have been missing for several years so really um honing their craft inside their building and making sure that they've got what they need to be successful so those are some of the areas we've been looking at but um you know with some of the the reduction in force pro process and different things that um, we've been managing it's been really difficult to start turning to some of those other projects that i know need attention we need to talk about safety in the district we need to talk about building a crisis man updating our crisis management plan 
um, which was why I talked to the police force a little bit this morning. So like a lot of those things are out there that I know we need to work on, but we have to prioritize what's most important. And right now it's stability and financial management of that little baby balance that we have, which isn't enough. Great, thank Even you. Even though you did a great job getting us to that. <laughs> All right, and I think the last piece um, that I have, and Josh, you brought this up, we had had a conversation about trying to solicit um, additional feedback beyond what the board may see on a daily basis. Uh, we've done that in the past previously, and uh, we've gone back and forth, it sounds like a little bit, but having um, some type of target feedback. And so I kind of want to open up the conversation now. I think the main things would be to, uh, and we don't have to have it all solidified tonight, but to get an idea of, of who that would be um, and then the medium that we'd be looking at for soliciting the feedback. So if I remember back a couple meetings we had talked about, um, you know, probably primarily like building administrators. Um, if you look through most of the materials that like OSBA or other states put out, um, there's kind of two key points. One is um, like frequent contact, so they have a, a reference point uh, and it's on a, a regular basis. So kind of those were, um, the, the key pieces of, of who you should be looking at, trying to solicit the feedback from. Um, you know, I think in the past we've done a couple different like email formats, and um, but I'd be open to hearing other suggestions and ideas. I, what were the two things you mentioned? Uh, sorry, it was frequency, um, it was and, frequency point of reference. and um, just point of contact so that they had to have regular contact. Um, oh, got it, got it. With the, with the person being evaluated, so not just like once and done type deal. Got it. Oh. So, so yeah, really we talked about the direct reports would have direct that, reports. yeah. I, I view this one um, basically in, in two phases for like feedback. So formal and informal. Formal would be the process of what you're going through and how to get that targeted feedback. This goes back to my first, I don't know, four months on the board where I was really struggling with board policy BG of board staff communications. So it's like, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this policy we have that says I just can't go into a school and go to a teacher like, how's it going? How's Kim doing? And I'm really curious, because I think that's just as important of getting like feedback of the informal and just, you know, putting in our memory bank. And then, because that, I mean, that's a, that's a big part of it for me. Well, except for here's the thing, you you have to convince the rest of us, like if we're doing, we're speaking with one voice, we mm -hmm. all have to have the same information. Like you would, I mean, are you going to come to our executive session and say, hey, this teacher over here said this to me, so I think we should score here. But that goes into how I fill it out. I, my individual report. But your individual report only matters as we talk about it and make it one. Okay. So I guess I guess that's the that's the point is like I think that you can still give feedback about those informal things for sure but the but how will that affect like we can't all hang our hats on the conversation that you had of course I I think I, I, I see your point I think you're talking about like that information would filter into how you fill it out to your point, you're saying that like the rest of the board wouldn't have that information to make a decision on. So I think, I well, think well for example, like how many teachers that I hear that said, we hate edX, we hate edX, we hate edX, we hate it, we hate it, please do something about this. And then there's, so that's feedback I'm getting. There's some people said, oh, I've never heard that. Well, 95% well, of your teachers, 130 of them filled it out. Correct. Said they did not want that to be in the district any further. It's correct, but yeah. I'm saying this is before. Yeah. Whispers and rumors are going around. We have a problem with this, maybe this curriculum, and we don't like it. How are we supposed to get that information if you say you can't go talk to my staff members? Does that make sense? So this has. I didn't. I'm trying I, mean, to, I didn't say that. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to figure out how we can collect that. information both formally and informally yeah. because there's another school district, like Oswego, that's their policy says. They encourage both formal visits to school and the informal. So our policy does not say that. Yeah. And I want to make sure that, particularly myself and the board, that we're being as respectful to you and following policies of how we gather information on our job. 
Yeah, this part of it I have not ever done, so sorry. I'm done. Don't have so any experience with that. If, if we do, um, like we talked about, um, yeah, I think direct reports is really key because they have a lot of interactions with Kim, you know, in terms of the mm -hmm. feedback. Direct reports mean principals? Or what are direct reports? Yes. Okay. Anybody directly answers. Anybody okay. that directly answers to Kim. Okay. I, I, don't, I think principals are included, but if we want to in Debbie. expand that, we can. Or that you know. I supervise. So, like, you can right. Debbie. So, or, yeah. so, we definitely want to get that because they have the frame of working with Kim on a daily, close basis. So, that's important. So, we need to develop that number, too, right? So, let's just say there's 12. I, I don't know the exact remember. There's more than that, obviously, because we have every principal plus we have the staff that answered to Kim. So let's just say we have 20, right? We probably want to have maybe a little bit more opinions than that. Um, so is there a way that we could incorporate um, teacher feedback into that too? Maybe we, again, this is just me thinking out, out loud for an idea. Do we say, okay, um, at each school we're going to, you know, pick, we're going to randomly select five five teachers for feedback um, as part of that process, just so we can also gain greater perspectives, right? So we, we can be ahead of it better on the, you know, to your point, well, we don't like edX, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't hear it more until that real formal survey went out, right? I'm just using that as an example. How do we catch that beyond just um, the direct reports? But at the same time, I want to give respect to Kim because, mm -hmm. you know, so anyway, I'm just trying mm -hmm. to think how do we how do we broaden that number a bit, yet still be appropriate mm -hmm. in catching that survey. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that might be tricky is that they might not have the point of contact. Th and that's true. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. and let's I, see. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that, that really gets to me. That really gets gray area. Uh, you know how how uh, how would you select? The sampling, uh, and and they're not, and then when they're not direct reports, that's a whole different mm -hmm. ball game as far as Kim's responsibilities. Um, I struggle with that one, going out that outside the direct report. That's yeah. fair enough. I, I yeah. just think that you know, I, given you know, I, I try to put myself if I was in her yeah. place. And that would be, I, there's too many moving parts on that as far as uh, it'd be such a, if you, especially if you weren't all inclusive, it, it's two different things. One is if you would even go to that level to begin with, and then if you did, the inclusiveness. And when you're restricting to such a small sampling, for me, that's not a very good comfort level. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need to go that wide to get the information that that we are looking for personally. I mean, I don't know that, but that's just a sense that I have. Mm -hmm. I think the direct reports would be adequate. Right. I think I generally agree, agree with that. I think being um, part of you know, what we call like a 360 evaluation where you have your, your mm -hmm. supervisors and your subordinates or your direct reports, um, it can be helpful seeing if their assessment of you are in sync mm -hmm. as opposed to like off. Mm -hmm. And so um, also fully understanding there's kind of a double-edged sword where I think one would probably have to be fairly, as the best of our ability, like anonymous because mm -hmm. sometimes people are uncomfortable about giving evaluations to their supervisors mm -hmm. um, and then being able to give frank feedback and then also understanding that um, all the feedback may not be like overwhelmingly positive. Uh, the things we'd be hopefully looking for is like, is there a rationale for decision making? So I think there, I think there is some value um, in getting that feedback because I think for otherwise there's going to be elements of this that we just probably don't have the the reference point to fully assess. So that's kind of my thoughts. So how would it, so every principal would get one, right? Because that's fair. You can't exclude some. Yeah, and then when it comes to the outside the principles, when you say targeted, that's where it gets a little more hairy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that would be, you know, if we're starting to look at like, um, let's say we're going back to the standards of uh, communication, community relations piece, 
like that's well that's one I was gonna well, wait till later because yeah. that's not yeah a director. so how do you do that one? <clears throat> we could we could rely on you know Kim's input too on some of the community members and folks outside our district that she interacts with on a on a regular basis and I would say you know use that term regular you know something that's oh now I, I talked to him once in the last six months that probably doesn't count but somebody in the community that, that she has interactions with we can get a list from her you know and outside our district who, who are you talking to well I've got these seven people that I really talk to a lot I think that would be a good way to, to get that outside feedback I think that that's great and I think that biting off a small chunk and doing it well mm -hmm. maybe my priority like because I think you like you said opening it up to teacher I mean I I don't I and I I see Phil's point as well and I'm willing to explore it more still but not right now mm -hmm. like I think that direct report thing is going to be hard enough to do and and we don't even know if they'll comply right we haven't asked that's them that's the problem yeah. we had last time well, I think that the principals, they probably will, but, but we should probably reach out and ask them. <laughs> well, I think we can, we can do this anonymously, and we can, you know, because, you know, each a, a link or whatever the, to the medium of collection will be sent to each, each participant. Obviously, reiterate the responses would be anonymous, but if we did it on a, you know, Google Doc or yeah, Survey sure Monkey or something like that where the results would come back in, in, in a, in a, uh, a blinded way that we don't know who who says it right we also have to keep this sample size we have to make it powerful right not just you know five people we need to make it you know powerful in number but we also have to make it manageable because once we get all that how do we synthesize all the trends that we get out of this right um, do we all do we all sit and look at you know let's just say the number we've got now with Kim's direct report and maybe some community there's probably at least 30 right maybe a little more so how do we synthesize it down to the trends, down to the, you know, the, the, the high level, okay, in these areas, we're seeing these kind of trends within this standard, if we give the standards out to people, right? So I think that's going to be important as well as how we collect that data. When do we have to make a decision by? We have time. Uh, we don't need to necessarily decide this until kind of going off the last um, evaluation process. I think it would be. We should probably do it sooner sooner's proposal later, but I think we can, um, at January 2025, uh, that's when the planning session would take place, going off of, I think, the previous timeline from, like, two years ago. So we have time, so we don't have to decide now, so we definitely have time to kind of wrestle with it. Um, but not something we need to decide tonight or the best next board meeting, but I think for the superintendent, if we are thinking that, at some point we should probably let her know sooner as opposed to later like I want to wait till January and spring and be like oh no. by the way <laughs> yeah no uh, um, what do you guys think about if we just use these same questions that are on this OSBA that we're looking at and that's what we send out you know because it doesn't sound like we're going to send out to like 200 people if it's manageable like in the 50 range I would like to see the alignment between the standards we're evaluating Kim on and what the feedback is based on too so I, I, I agree with you doesn't that I mean it would be this you know objectively the same but that would just somebody would have to do the numbers and Debbie <laughs> to rate them you know 50 and then you got to do the math yourself but there'd be a way we just sent this as a PDF to so I think I think for tonight what I'd like to maybe kind of get a feel for at least a consensus consensus um, again with the superintendents kind of input as well as is the target feedback something that we're interested in doing in some capacity this mm -hmm. year yes 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 has to uh, and then the second part would be like what does that actually look like which we have some time to kind of think about we can maybe take a look at the standards that are uh, in OSBA make sure the superintendent gets you know take a look at that and is comfortable and then um, the other pretty important piece is making sure that the folks that we are looking to get the feedback actually want to partake. So mm -hmm. I think for tonight we've accomplished the first part of that of yes, we're interested and then we'll figure out the, the how and the who um, okay. in the coming weeks. You're so good at that, Derek. So. And um, like, so Josh has an idea about, you know, using a specific list of questions. If we have um, mm -hmm. ideas between now and I don't know. In the next few weeks, is that okay to send those to you? Yeah, that'd be great. All 
All right. Well, I think that's all I have. Good job. You got everything. I think. Yeah. I feel. You need I, I, thanks, Derek. I feel like I can uh, take it back. Step. Yes. For next step. <laughs> so yeah, nice uh, job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. A lot of work goes into okay. that, Derek. I, that I, I appreciate it. Well, well thank you, Derek. Thank you very much. Except the first part where I kind of fast forward. Uh, so <laughs> well, we won't evaluate you on your click, yeah. click for use. <laughs> Those are unpredictable. <laughs> Those, uh, okay. School board student representative uh, brought that on. That was, you know, it, we, it was suggested last summer. We talked about it, uh, bringing it on the agenda. Uh, Kim is uh, actually a proponent of mm -hmm. it. And uh, basically, as far as don't need to have uh, be time consuming tonight, basically, as far as I'm concerned, are we interested in pursuing it? And, and by that, what I mean is uh, getting samples of what some other districts are doing, uh, some feedback from our high school administration on input, you know, on doing it and that sort of thing. Uh, are we are we up to taking a look at it? And what, what does it look like from a high level? That's from from a high level, it would be a student. I'm gonna put a bias in. You'd probably have two, just because of the nature of the beast. Uh, one kind of gets overwhelmed as far as feeling be able to speak freely and so you'd maybe have two students that would be here sit with us uh, they anything that uh, they wouldn't be involved with executive sessions they wouldn't be involved on any, on any vote but they could be pulled in and involved in discussions uh, and especially areas as we found last spring uh, those students do have uh, thoughts and, and opinions and they give another perspective and, and quite honestly it's a perspective uh, we don't we don't have pre we you know we have our ways and everything of getting perspective from our uh, adults out there uh, in the community we have ways of getting it from our staff but the students uh, some of the things that we deal with it uh, can be kind of interesting and helpful to hear from the. And Kim, you've had some experience with, and maybe you could give a little high-level look at what it might be. Yeah, like. we had a student representative in the last district I was in, and he attended board meetings, and he happened to also be the ASB president, so he would, you know, give updates on what was happening in the high school. That was just kind of co of a coincidence. Um, but I think, you know, you certainly could have an ASB president that comes in to give an update, you know, regularly too. But um, it sure was nice to have his voice and he was such a, a great, um, you know, advocate for the high school and for different programs and CTE. And, you know, it was just really, a, it was just a great, young, vibrant person to have on the board. And I thought it was really um, helpful. And I think it's good in a district where we've had significant um, challenges that we, you know, that we're considering student voice. I think student voice is one of the more um, important things that we can incorporate into our system. Part of my speech tomorrow is about student voice. Uh, so I would highly recommend this. Uh, there is a policy that goes with it from OSBA that we would want to look at. So it's unclear. They do not sit up here with us. They sit up here with us. Who, how do they get picked? There's an interview process. It's all in the policy. Um, Josh, I can send you a sample okay. policy okay. from another district or from, o I can have OSB. I would like to look at it before I make it. So those, are my, those are my questions too. <laughs> so some districts uh, uh, have an election. Uh, some have appointed. They can't from, vote. They, no, they can't vote. Yeah. No, no voting. No, 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 they have, what I'm saying is they have elections at their student body. I'm saying, uh, but they don't have them on. Okay. Yeah. We're putting them on. Okay. And, and so, no, but if right now, is there enough interest to take a look? You know, there's no sense in any of us, Kim or myself or anybody, if there's no interest, well, we won't go beyond, Yeah. you know, but if there's at least take willingness to take a look and look at some policies and, and uh, ways of doing it. Well, I knew that Phil had brought this up 
Um, when I when I went to the OSPA conference last November, there were actually I think three topics, three different um, sessions you could go to to hear about this. And I went to one of them, and um, it seems to be pretty common. Um, and I personally like the idea. I think that we have to have the capacity to do it. Like I don't necessarily think it's Uber number one priority. Right. Um, but I think I do think it's a nice idea. Um, I the choice of the person is concerned that that part is most concerning to me. Like I've, I've also attended student voice um, uh, presentations, and the most powerful one uh, I think was from Springfield. And the student they had a student vo a whole group, a student voice group, and it was the kids who aren't the ones that are the student body president. Yeah. I mean, that, and then, and so like if we had to, like you know, remember when we had um, Sequoia, uh, we had, Jen brought like four students mm -hmm. in and they talked to us and one boy, he was just was good. really yep. told us like it is. And like that's the kind of voice that I would be interested. Not that I'm saying the student body president is bad. I, I don't think that, but to have at least um, somebody who may be that not typical to rise to that, you know, to rise to the top. I didn't have a huge interest pool when I yeah when yeah I yeah. Had to approach yeah. the kids at once. Too, so. And that might be a hard thing too. Yeah, it might be like I got two yeah. kids that wanted to do it, and I talked to them both, and it was pretty obvious. You so, know. I guess basically, are we willing to discuss it further down on here, or I'm willing to look at it further. <clears throat> And once, yeah. once we have kind of the sample policies and yeah. see what it yeah. looks like, I'd like to look at that. Okay. You see what I'm saying? There's not, there's not much point doing all that if people's got their mind made up. My mind's not, my mind's yeah. not so, made up. So. <laughs> yeah, my mind's not made up, but yeah. I'm also in the, in the line of we're bare bones this year. Do we even just one more little thing? Can we just maybe think about that for next year? That's my, well, you know. This is a anyway. low to no cost sort of proposition yeah. and can help with communication. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Uh, and then uh, facilities usage. Wait, can, Phil, do you feel like you got a, a, a read I on I feel us? I've got a directive, yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, Kim on facilities usage. That's actually Kim Dowd this oh, evening. Oh, Kim Dowd, yeah. okay. Other Kim. No. Yes, thank you. thank you all. So uh, just a, a review tonight, we have uh, board policy KG outlines our district facility usage for our community. Um, of course, uh, having access to our facilities for our community is a very important part of our relationships with organizations, civic groups, uh, as well as individuals. Um, however, we've, um, as we're reviewing every every piece of our uh, board policy as well as financials we have identified that we are in desperate need of an update um, to um, specifically the AR that is uh, part of board policy KG um, board policy KG indicates um, that we absolutely encourage the use of all district property by community members, but we also uh, uh, state that the board expects that all community users contribute to the cost of facility operation during their specific use. And so as we have continued to uh, review that, uh, we've identified that uh, our policy or our AR with uh, KG uh, has not been updated in quite some time and wanted to share with you tonight that we are going to be bringing to the uh, September board meeting an update um, to that AR. Uh, one of the, the actual Silver Falls District Facility Fee Schedule uh, has outdated rates, um, currently indicating that a, for instance, a custodial staff uh, would be at $25 an hour. Our cost is closer to 65. Um, we did identify that this was an area um, that our financial um, charges have not kept up with the actual costs involved. Um, so we are going to be bringing uh, the updated AR to, to you at that next board meeting. Um, so we also have met with some community uh, members to 
to review uh, how their usage of, of the facilities has uh, been going. They've give, been able to give us some great feedback and areas uh, for growth and improvement as we want to continue to partner uh, with, these, with these entities. So we just wanted to share with you tonight that uh, we're gonna be uh, bringing the updated AR uh, to you, presenting that to you at the September board meeting. I will just for a little context, um, you know, will share that unfortunately in uh, three years time, um, the use of facilities has uh, our revenues for those usages um, were about $50,000 less than our actual cost just for staffing of those facilities. So, um, you know, we have utility costs, we have, you know, other costs that are embedded. Obviously, if somebody is here using, you know, a, a library, we've got the lights on and that sort of thing, that is part of a, a usage fee that is on the AR, but primarily our cost, our cost update are, are due to our staffing cost changes, so. Yeah. Um, does the, does the present AR make any <coughs> difference as far as like weekend usage or not? In, in other words, when our costs are higher, so do correct. they differentiate any of that? So we currently do not um, charge for staffing costs if it is within a scheduled shift. So right now, if, um, a, if we had a staff person available uh, for the use of a facility after hours, there would not be an additional charge for that because per board policy, we must have a staff member on site. Uh, but if that is within their working hours, there generally is not a charge unless significant, obviously additional staffing is required. The majority of um, uh, the, the fee schedule for the staffing portion comes from e uh, the weekend usage. Um, we have a significant amount of weekend usage and in fact, the district employs a half-time staff member solely to arrange for the logistics of using the facilities across this district. So um, again, even excluding those costs, um, you know, we, we definitely need to adjust our rates. Board Policy KG um, does indicate that um, the fees for the use of district facilities uh, will be determined by the superintendent based on fees approved by the board. Uh, thus, to update the AR, which includes the rates, we need to bring this to you. And just wanted to give you an idea that uh, the literally is going to be a flat pass through on those on those costs. Um, our staff are into overtime on the weekends, unfortunately. Um, so that is that is part of why the costs will be will be adjusted. So. And then, um that'll get messaged out to all the users, I assume at some point. And Correct, yeah. the, the nice part is right now when somebody wants to use a district facility, it is an online reservation system and the very first step is to acknowledge that you've read the uh, fee schedule. Uh, so we will make sure that that language is updated to say, you know, that the rates were Correct updated. Um, but yes, um, we have multiple categories based on who the renters are. Um, there's different fee levels, but you know, for, you know, for existence or for example, um, rental of the Silverton High School Library for an entity, a nonprofit entity that serves youth in Silverton, this, this room itself is $5 per hour. I yeah. don't think it's covering the electricity right now. Yeah. So we want to make sure we maintain rates that are affordable for our taxpayers and for our community groups that are striving for the, the same purpose. But when it comes to personnel costs, we do, again, per board policy, need to be reimbursed for the cost and that, that uh, we need to make those adjustments. Yeah. Can I ask what brought this about reviewing this? So absolutely, we have uh, been contacted by a number of, um, you know, our local groups uh, in terms, uh, in, in regard to, you know, fees and invoicing, um, reviewed our, our current practices and policies, uh, and unfortunately just, you know, as our costs are going up, um, those, those fees have, have gone up. And so we found that, um, the AR 
indicating the rates has not been updated since 2018. So the reason I ask is because I'm concerned what the uh, unforeseen consequences of this would be. It's come to my attention that the city is also doing the same thing with their relationship with us regarding water. So to my knowledge, we don't pay any water bill to the city, at least on our, some of our fields. There's some type of grandfather deal in somewhere around a couple tens of thousands of dollars that they don't charge us so that they can have equal access or use to the sporting fields. To my knowledge, it's been harder and harder for them to be able to use said fields with all the other activity groups. And so they're like, maybe we should relook at this. Hmm. And um, I, I think, Kim, you may have had a conversation with the mayor about this or not. I'm not sure. But I just talked to another city council member, and it was confirmed that this is something that's on their radar. I did meet with the mayor and um, Corey Misley, and I knew that was not mentioned to me during that meeting. Okay. Um, but I do have another request from Corey to meet again. So, um, you know, but he doesn't. He doesn't say about what. Because I'm just afraid that if we're going to be, they're like, okay, well then here's that. There is unintended the, consequences. Yeah. There is a grandfathered agreement uh, when uh, Dr. Joe Morlock was interim um, mm -hmm. superintendent. There was a meeting held. Um, we are um, unable, have been unable so far to locate that that the details of that prior agreement. Um, but yes, there has been a partnership between the school district and the city for many years. And yes, everything is, is certainly being evaluated. Um, we, are, we are trying to honor you know, board policy, which indicates that you know, we are to be reimbursed for the staffing costs. Um, our facility costs definitely are, are subsidized. There's no other word for it, correct? Um, for certain groups. Um, obviously, if it's a private group, such as uh, if I want to have my son's birthday party in the gym here, I'm mm -hmm. going to pay a higher rate than if I am Silver Falls Soccer Club because of, of my entity type. Um, but absolutely, um, the use of district property is, you know, these are taxpayer facilities, and it's important that, um, you know, that they are protected for the taxpayers, but also available for our other agencies in, in this area. Well, it, it sounds like, you know, kind of with dovetails off Josh's question, that the onus on this was we're not covering our costs. Correct. And we just, we got it, we, <laughs> especially now, we have to cover our costs. And, and you know, I, and that's yeah, no way yeah. around that. Yeah. And by, you know, costs, what, what our intent is to bring to you is the, <clears throat> the actual incurred cost for the staff member who is on site during the rental. Again, the district is covering a half time employee, $5 an hour. I can assure you is not covering the mm -hmm. electrical and HVAC costs and the costs of supplying paper products in the bathroom, right. you know, during during a rental of an event. So we definitely want to keep fees as reasonable as possible. Um, the rates on uh, the fee schedule that is published have not been in, uh, excuse me, the rental rates are in place and have been in place for quite some time. The hourly uh, staff rates have changed many times, and the AR has not been updated to reflect what has actually been being billed over the years. Well, we also look at you know like the the the, the fields that have the lighting option too. Like, look, we know electricity's gone through the roof, so like that has to be adjusted in order to make sure we're not yeah. underwater. I I would have a hard time believing that fifteen dollars per hour covers the lights on a field. Well, they did switch to LEDs. We did switch to <laughs> so LEDs, that, that, lighting project, there you go. It is a lower a power consumption. But we definitely want to maintain the availability of the facilities for, for our groups, but we also have to be fiscally responsible and align with board policy um, to make sure yep. that at least the custodial kitchen or supervision staff costs are covered. Josh, yep. you go back to, sorry. No, no, it just sounds like it's good to revisit these numbers and the ongoing agreements with the city. Right. Because mm -hmm. I, I, 
member, uh, mayor from years ago. He said often referred to the. No, it wasn't a mayor. It was um, brother-in-law is a former maintenance director here, and he said, "Yeah, Silverton is often referred to as the, the the Parks and Rec Department for the City of Silverton." And the, and there's just some agreements. There's some handshakes that go, mm -hmm. and it's just good to revisit them and re you know new people here, new people at Silverton, yeah. understand yeah. what those agreements are, the foundation of them, and there could be things overlooked on both sides and just good it's good to have this visit so mm -hmm. so Josh is your understanding that like we're not paying to water the fields and and there may be a concern of the city having access to the fields not necessarily having to pay for them but <laughs> just like access I, I'm gonna be really careful as much as I can be because I don't want to yeah and I, if, if my, you don't, my if knowledge you can't answer, you can't answer. is something around a water bill and field usage to best rough estimate of what it is it's, it's the large fields like say robert frost or mark twain or even the middle school those fields they're pumped using city water and to my knowledge we don't get a bill for those watering of the fields i don't know about this school in general i don't think it incorporates that field. Okay. and um, the water usage bills in silverton as you know are not cheap yep we'll be happy to try to locate some of these um, prior agreements <laughs> that have been in place because there is there is definitely a partnership the city does uh, does you know provide for mm. uh, facility use and yes there clearly is an agreement that has been in place I don't want to speak to something that mm -hmm. I cannot yeah. right. validate and I right understand. now so and I think we all want to have as healthy of a relationship correct. between both parties as possible so I want to make yes. sure that we do so that. Definitely ongoing communications, uh, and yes, that uh, we will continue to, to look into that because you're right, it's absolutely critical that we continue to serve our community across all aspects. You're right, Silver Falls School District is essentially the parks and rec for Silver Falls at this time. You know, the city has phenomenal park mm -hmm. systems, but we don't have rec a lot of the recreational facilities yep. that other, other towns may have. We don't, you know, we don't have mm -hmm. a Boys and Girls Club. We have a phenomenal YMCA, um, but you know, without the partnership with them, our swim team wouldn't have a place to swim. Mm -hmm. And without our partnership, they would struggle to have a track meet and those sort of things. So we definitely want it to be a two-way relationship mm -hmm. for everybody and and absolutely are are working closely with them and i guess to dovetail off this board chair and, and kim kelson it was a habit or a tradition at least once a year with city council and school board to have one of these mm -hmm. I, I don't think we've done it for a, a little bit I know yeah, a joint meeting yeah i think that's a good idea COVID COVID. yeah they asked jason's been reaching yeah. out a lot and yeah it's never happened he talked to me about that when I met with them a couple of weeks ago. Okay. I just haven't, you know, put a lot of bandwidth to it yet. But yeah, well, I think you got a lot going on, so thank you for meeting. Yeah. I think it, it's definitely something we should schedule. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just need to make sure we have a good agenda and know what we're going to talk about. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything going on that thing? Uh, thanks, Kim, for the. Information came down Thanks for that. Uh, Division 22 standards. Kim. Yeah, so I put a sample. So this isn't our actual report, but this oh. is just a sample, and this is how ODE oh, sends it out. They put everything in compliance initially, and then you can do the drop down menu to kind of change um, how you uh, report. And so I just wanted this to be on your radar. So this is something that superintendents are required to report in November. Um, and these are, you know, like the public school standards for the state of Oregon, and they're based on state law. Um, so I think, you know, I, as I've been working through some things in the district, like there's some of these that need assistance. And if I can say that they're in progress or that we're making progress, you know, that's good. Um, if, if I feel like we don't meet in some of these areas, then, you know, we have to, uh, formulate a plan to you know to become compliant and so these are just the general categories like PE minutes um, human sexuality education so there's a lot of different things on here uh, Addie's plan which is the suicide act um, 
plan that we're supposed to have in place. So uh, some of these engine, Hannah mentioned that that might need updated. And so we're just working through some, we're gonna work through some of these the minute we get kids back in the building. So uh, just, a, just a FYI for you, um, that this is something that superintendents have to manage every year. Yeah. Where's the one from last year? Um, 23, I, you 24. mean like where is it kept on the system? Well, so it was supposed to be filed November 1st, correct? Correct, yeah. Do we, I'm looking on our website, I just would like to see if we got to that or not. Um, we did. Yeah, it, it should recorded. be in the board minutes, yeah. So I have 22, 23, would that be the one that would be... I can't find it on our website, so. I'm looking to see if I can find it in the um, files on. Okay. I have it. You have it, Debbie? Okay, Debbie's got it. Okay. So we can send it out to you if you want to see what we reported. I would like to. Yeah, on the last go round. Because I actually thought I was like, oh, we're doing good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, did you say that's a sample? <laughs> yeah, just a sample. Yeah, sorry. It does, I mean, we'll let you print it with bounce from Mark. Yeah. I'd have to go on through and remark them all. But, to uh, that end, I'm wondering if we could put the word sample on the board book. Because if yes, somebody we, didn't watch the that. Yeah, right. that'd be yeah great. we could. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, yeah I should have yeah. watermarked Thank it. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. That was a good. good. Yeah. Josh? November 14, 2022 meeting. But I could say. Oh, it's in, in, okay, in board book there. Okay. So what year was it? Uh, 20. Oh, no, there was a, there was a more recent. I did that last year. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, it's done every year in November. Mm -hmm. Just a couple areas that are going to need some. Thank you for the heads up. Yeah, yep. you're welcome. Anything else on the Division 22 standards? Okay, moving on. Finance Committee. We said we were going to set up a Finance Committee, and it, we need to we need to be uh, putting that in place. And so, what is our board? What does our board see that they want that to be? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you envision? Hmm. Well, I liked what Joe uh, presented to us, um, more of a deep dive. And I think he said three board members that got to meet with the um, superintendent and business manager on I think it was a monthly was it a monthly basis um, about like in depth like go into the balance sheets um, and and compare to the budget um, more in depth than we necessarily would go in the meeting like that's what I remember from and what he said financial reports that we get yes monthly now anybody else perspectives what what we want I'm that just, seems right to me yeah. under considering the current conditions and then you know as the financial situation improves over the years you, you don't have to meet that much maybe something like that that you can change but right now it needs a deep dive and a very close monitoring, monitoring you know the board needs to know what's going on you know. How does that work for like board meetings? Do those three present on the back of Kim Dowd or just add commentary? To me, I think the hope is, is that they would be able to bring a, a deeper level to mm -hmm. the conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would bring a deeper level to the conversation and then as Kim gives a report the public is knowing that there's three board members who have been meeting with her once yeah. a month or every three months yeah. before this because we weren't mm -hmm. the last time yeah so. and, and talk about maybe the questions that came up yeah exactly during that meeting and yep. then they could answer questions that mm -hmm. people who aren't in the committee have yes yes can I present another option 
Yes. yes. Okay. So this is Joe's recommendation, and I, I get that, and I think the deep dive is warranted, and I think it's smart. I just wonder if there's an opportunity to um, give a greater context to our community by having a larger scale meeting with more people included. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that that was necessarily not in Joe's okay. vision, um, and we've done that in the past and it might be um before covid probably we we talked about that and Correct. having yes. budget committee members yes. actually extending their service into not just that mm -hmm. short window but yeah, sure. mm -hmm. meeting on a regular basis mm -hmm. and it happened a little bit but um it wasn't a board committee it was a Super. Uh, a work group kind of thing so that's happened in the past like something like that has happened in the past or, or didn't okay. steve would steve would meet with budget committee members after the budget was done in different times is that the one you're referring to yeah and then jonathan would was there yeah. mm -hmm. uh, for sure maybe janet jonathan and janet might have been in, in on that meeting but he's usually bringing in budget committee members to help yeah with that process correct yeah, and, I think and I so. remember, yeah and, and i guess to clarify my memory of what joe suggested he, he just said up to three board members because you can't yeah. have four right. but also exactly. budget committees and maybe some members of the com a, a committee that you think would be appropriate i, yeah. I, I think that my head be. goes to budget committee members as being a part of that too because yeah. uh, you know they're they, they serve for that you know kind of intense time during the spring when we set the budget but i think i would love to see greater involvement if they would like to to be involved in that process throughout the year, especially if we're gonna have much more optics on it than we had in the past. Yeah. Well, I think, I remember too, Joe's talking about the other purpose of it was to really build a, a deeper level of financial literacy yeah. on the board with regard to specifically school finances. Mm -hmm. And just, I think we all learned a, a, quite a lot, you know, even though mm -hmm. some of us probably had a pretty good idea, there was a lot, there's a lot to know. Mm -hmm. um, and so just building that um, knowledge base on the board is helpful. I don't think it's bad for people in the community have to have that knowledge too. So right. union leadership, teachers, other staff members, I think, um, you know, I think having current context about what our, what our challenges are mm -hmm. is helpful for people when they're, you know, when they're wondering why we make a decision. I'm just trying to increase transparency across the district and communication and I and I could do this work in another way as well so um, you know it's if you want to just do that deep dive with that smaller team that's fine too um, I could do it as part of the integrated process uh, that we do for ODE for the grants and different things so that's that's really a money conversation as well and I would do that with large community groups so you know it's up to you guys um, whether you want to do it as a larger finance committee or if you want to keep it small uh, so that you get a better understanding because um, I have an alternate way that I can help my people understand it but I think it's important as we move forward you know that we understand the different complications that Kim and I will face as we build the next budget and that those complications aren't very far away so yeah. we'll start ta <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll start talking about that's this right there we'll, so so we have a I just have one question because sure. my my concern is is this because I find myself guilty of it um, is that but I'm also aware like I got to be very cognizant of, of the time and the thinness of the district office and so if um, I have you know I sent Kim Dowd an email asking about some financial numbers and I was like only if you have time you know um, I'm afraid that like are we gonna be making extra work for them for, of providing more reports how do we keep whoever's on the committee to respect the time of both Kim's that's just one of my concerns is what's the operations look of said committee like oh could I get this thing from that time like that's I'm just curious what it looks like I have the exact same concern capacity and what that looks like if yeah. you expand the size of the committee then it's like now I gotta make 10 extra reports or I've got 10 questions and so mm -hmm. I have more the emails same question if there's capacity yeah. then Maybe, and, and I think, again, going to Owen's point, I think one of uh, Dr. Morlock's big pieces was building kind of that institutional knowledge among the board to be able to go back to our constituents and yeah. hammer out and answer some of those tough questions. So I'm not opposed to expanding it, but I'm concerned about the ask. Okay. 
Does it have to be, if there's just three, what does the policy say on do we have to provide, I, I've talked about the Sunshine Law, like open, open meeting. It has to be open meeting. Yeah, it does. So anybody can come lines. anyway. Mm -hmm. And listen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to and listen. Yeah, right. Yeah, you could have media. You could have anybody in there. And and it it does have the provision where if we did it under, if you notice there was BCE and BCE, mm -hmm. two different mm -hmm. types of committees. I think from what I'm hearing, most had envisioned the BCE type of committee. Uh, uh, if you remember right in April we adopted that changed it so it could have been a standing committee before it wasn't mm -hmm. uh, in the last paragraph of it if you go to it it says that committee itself can appoint advisory members from the staff student body or community with approval of the board mm -hmm. uh, advisory members will be instructed in the committee's functions and their status Advisory members may not be included in considering whether a quorum of the committee is present, nor may they vote on recommendations to be made to the board, mm -hmm. either an advisory member or an ex-official member may present a written minority report to the board. But, uh, so I'm reporting it if, if, uh, if, if the committee decided to have some advisory members those advisory members could still, even if it decision or what the board, that group might have brought back to the board, if anything, you know, as far as recommendation of, of change something. So the capability is there even once the committee would be formed mm -hmm. to, to do that. Uh, but so basically, do we want to set that up or do we want to set up an advisory committee which has, is set up in a different way, doesn't have the board members uh, back there, basically ad hoc members of it by the time you do it. And it's a little more of a, it's more along the lines of our bond advisory committees and those sorts of things that we've had. Well, maybe you could start with a small, deeper dive, and then maybe we could expand it if we felt like that was a good option later. As we get, you know, as we get yeah. further into the year, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, and I know we talked, uh, we talked in our uh, agenda meeting of possibility of you know quarterly having a meeting instead of monthly, as far as the ask. Of yeah, staff. that makes sense to uh, me. Especially with the financial reports we're getting now. Now, if we were still getting what we were getting a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I guess. But I guess what we're getting now. I mean, I guess. I guess my. We, yeah, I guess my vision is of this is like every month or every three months, Kim gives a report to Kim. We, you know, we'd like a group of people structure right. it however it works right. to get essentially be in the same room to get the same report. How are we doing? Are we on track? Are we not on track? If we're on track, great. If we're not. Yeah. where it just just sit us all in the room and get the explainer mm -hmm. and then we go home and, and we know that we can report back and we've been explained and mm -hmm. we know where we're at you know it, it wasn't just some you know what we weren't just the finance director doesn't just say yeah we're doing fine we, we, we were actually there and saw the numbers and we were ex, ex, you know had the explainer that's that's my vision of this right Right. You know, I don't need to have a report. Or well, a and I, I think, and I think the vision was to guarantee, as a board, and and unfortunately, uh, because of our past situation, uh, it can be taken as, I mean, I'm not saying you guys are, but it can be taken as an affront to you as as someone trustworthiness of us, and mm -hmm. it's far from that. It's it's more of collectively we dropped the ball before we want to make sure we're staying on top of it no matter who's in those seats mm -hmm. right. and that we're being so, real with you as yeah, we go along yeah, like i yeah. just shared some very and, i mean and i've shared that and, previously yeah, with you and by it's email. and it's it's yeah. not a personality thing it's a position thing that we need to be in. i think honestly Proven. speaking personally it's the absolute best thing i think we can do and i 
I uh, greatly appreciate the concern over the workload, but right now the biggest workload we have is to ensure our long-term financial stability and doing that as transparent as possible. So gathering and going over all of the movements. Here were some here were some moves in, you know, financially positive moves. Here are some financially concerning moves. Here are things on the horizon. Here are and yes, you do get the you know financial reports and we try to summarize I shouldn't say try we do summarize some of those key topics but there are so many layers to this onion if you will and having a team who can understand it better and then help our community you know be those voices within our community to help our community understand you know it's not like getting a paycheck every month that might vary 10 bucks or something here and there because of a little deduction it is we are working in three fiscal years at a time. Right now we're thinking, did we get overpaid in last year or did we get underpaid? Are we gonna have a big negative adjustment in May of 2025 from you know last year? What, what does the next biennium look like? What is the state? So having partners to be able to have those conversations and mm -hmm. be able to be asked questions that we definitely want to answer. If a committee has those questions, the community has those questions too and we want we want to provide those that that information to our community so absolutely yes we are all very tired and um, a little uh, <laughs> slim on staffing uh, that is true in every quarter of this district right now but we are in this together and we we want the community with us as well so you would welcome the extra set up 100% i absolutely have been waiting for this to get kicked off so yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we don't we don't mind the extra set of eyes we were just thinking about making it even broader so mm -hmm. that we yep are you know talking to our teachers and talking to union leaders and talking to community people because at some point we need to build a middle school and we have to be yeah. able to you know talk about our needs in the district and um and i think we need to educate the public on the lack of funding for capital needs in the in the state um and so and i know the governor's working really hard on some of those projects but um, I think it's important that our, our teachers and our staff have a good understanding of what that looks like. And, and I think it's really important along with that, what Kim just said. Kim and I have talked and, and I think it's important that we as a, in a board, part of our function, that we be sure and bring these things to light as they are brought to light to us, that it's, it's you know, brought up in our financial report, brought up and we discussed here in front of God and everybody. Yeah. Uh, and so be part of educating the community on where we're at, what we got to look forward to, what's well, got to be done to get there. Kim did yep. a great job of that tonight, re-emphasizing yep. the, the state school fund shortage. Yes. And high school that, success. Exactly that sort of thing. And so. Mm -hmm. uh, I just well, wanted to say that I, I don't know if it matters if it's in this group that whatever we come up with or not, but I like the idea of emphasizing um, communicating to the union leadership because I feel like um, in negotiations, and this is just from my own personal perspective mm -hmm. of watching things here and in my own, you know, where I work, mm -hmm. um, we have somebody who we pay to be in charge of finances for the whole district, right? And that's their job and they do it all the time. <coughs> And then when we go to negotiations, it's really hard, I think, for the union side to know the financial situation because they don't have somebody that they're paying to do that all the time. So I think that the, the more opportunities that we give to really find that information um, and know that information, I think is going to be better for negotiations in the long, in the long run. Yeah, just my soapbox. Agree. Sorry, I'm yeah. to subject you all point. to it, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, yep. uh, Tom, the, you, the more financial literacy, the better. Yeah, <laughs> for all groups. Uh, agreed. So what I'm hearing is we'll go ahead and uh, well uh, after I've summarized and see if I'm hearing right, and then we'll go to the next step. But that will appoint a. Uh, Three board, three board members to uh, committee, uh, and that I would. I leaning towards having that committee, and Kim and Kim, 
work to come up with a schedule, something along the lines quarterly of what makes most sense of when you get reports and things like this. I'm sure it maybe doesn't fit evenly, but maybe certain months. Absolutely. That there would make are, more sense yeah, than others. That they could give us insight yeah. in. But to have that quantity of meetings, but mm -hmm. may not have looked like an exact science uh, as far as the spacing. And and to go ahead with that, and then if we're agreed on that, then the next thing I'd like to know uh, before those people would be a point is who is willing? <laughs> <laughs> so that we're not having to draft. I'd do it. Okay. I think it was something I would have done, but I decided to do policy stuff. And I'm still gonna be looking at it anyways. I don't think I need to be if nobody else, I mean, I prefer somebody besides me, but anyone else than Tom? I'm willing to do it. The only thing I'd point out is it'd be good, it would be, well, I'm willing to do it, but it'd be good, too, to have some of the people who have been elected later in time so that that mm. knowledge can last a little longer on well, the board as well. But well, By de definition of being <laughs> board chair, I would be on because board chair is on committee. Where is that, that in the policy? On board chair responsibilities. Oh. Okay, and, so it'd be. And so I would, but I, but I hear you if there would be somebody, you know, hearing what one says, if I, one I, of you two. I could do it, I'll do it. I'm already looking at that stuff already. It's not like it's constantly crunching numbers trying to figure it out well josh and i see this is because you like to ask a lot of questions and so <laughs> this is an opportunity Not to josh. ask those questions yeah i think it's a good idea yeah i was quiet the second half of the meeting tonight <laughs> no, no josh don't questions. don't no. it's a plus it's a plus <laughs> not a minus it's a plus, it's a plus. <laughs> hey, i'm gonna be you honest that's you know, your job yeah. okay yeah i mean i'm already doing it okay you fine with that it's well like you said it's not like it's yeah. crazy extra amount of work so, so that would so so Tom and so we have three people yeah, that would be yeah. on Josh and on. yeah and okay. do we have to vote on that because it says the board uh, appointed by the board yeah, yeah. and uh, appointed by the board so maybe we'll just put that to make it official on the next sure agenda yes ma'am um, <laughs> are you on it too Phil because then you have a quorum can't that's no, no it's just three that just would three. Be the three Tom Josh Phil oh. Okay. What was your comment earlier then about your kind of already part of I it by too. being? I guess I misunderstood. Yes. Part of the per policy, uh, the way I interpret it, you look at it there, and I may be wrong. If somebody else is dying to get on there, it sure wouldn't hurt my feelings. Which policy? Board is it? chair, you said. Yeah, the responsibilities of the board chair is where I. It might, it might say you're ex officio member of all committees, but. And, but if I'm there, that's. I gotta look it up on my phone. So. Do we know? Do you remember what policy it is? I'm looking right now at board officers. officers. That's BCB. I do remember seeing something when I was, and yes. Uh, so we'll just Is that an official functions unless delegate? Oh, appoint all committees. It says appoint all committees unless otherwise ordered by the board and will be an ex officio member of all such committees. Yeah, so that doesn't make him an actual member. Oh, okay. Right, it means he, yeah, it's kind of like a de facto. I love lawyers on board <laughs> committees. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm so glad that no here. Translate But if I'm present. Yeah, you wouldn't typically be present, I think. If, I don't, usually ex officio is Okay, right, but well, do you want to be on there? I'm fine with it. Yeah. Phil, you're already on the communications committee. Yeah. Yeah. So I, maybe 
I don't know, maybe. I have no problem whatsoever. If you want to be on there, Owen? I, I, I agree, though. I think it, it would be better to have somebody who's going to be it around would be too. longer. Yeah. I if mean, I'm willing to serve there, but. but. You guys are busy. That's what I say. <laughs> So then keep it the same members. same three. So we'll keep it the same three then? Bill, yeah. Josh, and Tom? Yeah. Okay. For now. And do we need to we'll 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 put that in the form of a appointment by the board at yeah. the next meeting. Yeah. We won't it's an action item, so we'll put it on that. Is that appropriate? I think Does that so. Make mm -hmm. sense? That makes sense to me. True. That's glad we the way I I would do it, that but that up. doesn't necessarily make it to the right way. But uh, I don't get anyone's concern. He's going to be here for another four terms. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. did like my joke. <laughs> He's deep in thought over there. <laughs> okay. Anything else on that committee? Everybody comfortable with where we're at there? Okay. We're adjourned. All right. Thanks, everybody.